Like everything shut here. down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me explain. Uh, well, first off, thank you for uh, for doing this. But let me explain exactly why I'm I'm reaching out to people like you and other people that are going to be in this book coming out October 10th. Um, well, obviously, it's been a very bizarre year. So, um, and then the the idea of this book coming out in the middle of this strange uh, strange time that we're living in because of, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll get into that later. You know, this book's going to come out and um, I had this like idea that I would have this fantasy uh, like book tour that I would set up and like thousands of people were, were going to flock to every appearance and I was going to, you know, just bask in the glory of all these people wanting to hear me talk and well, I, that's obviously not going to happen. I mean, I, I don't know if it was going to happen in the first place, but I just thought, well, I could talk to these people, especially uh, with the irony of this book coming out <laughs> now. Yeah. Or in a few months when things are like, you know, it's been a pretty bizarre year, you know, obviously. So um, that's the idea. So that's pretty much that's, the premise okay. behind this. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, how, how about this year, huh? It, it really sucks. I got yeah. um, my main job that I had, like sewing replicas, that pretty much dried up and I had to think on my feet. Yeah. And everyone's like, sew masks, sew masks. And I was like, I don't want to sew masks. And uh, then I ended up sewing masks for a while and hospital gowns. But the good thing about that was it got me out of the house because I was just staying in and I wasn't going to my studio and I was afraid to go out. And I thought, well, you know, I'm helping people making hospital gowns and making masks because they're going to the hospitals. So I took yeah, yeah. the bus, went out, the job dried up because the guy didn't know what he was doing and wow. it ended and it was like, okay, well, I get to work in my studio. So I had yeah. to make that work. Right. And they closed my building, my work building down for two months. And when they opened it, there was always like somebody who wanted something that would help me get through the month. So. Right. Right. So you're, you're still uh, living in the embodiment of, of uh, this book, this book of mine, so to speak, <laughs> you know, even, yeah, I thought when all this stuff started with the pandemic, I thought that uh, I thought I'd be out of, out of luck. You know, I just thought, man, nobody's going to want any artwork or anything like that. No, they want it more. Yeah, they want it more. Well, I just didn't really know, you know, and it kind of it made me feel bad for, you know, two thirds of everybody that's in this book because there are a lot of them are musicians, you know, and yeah. everybody's like in the same boat. I mean, they're actual real, you know, like this is yeah. what they do to make money. So they're kind of fucked. So, um. But yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. They people seem to want, you know, they want more stuff. Which I've been I mean, selling T-shirts. People have been ordering T-shirts, and I, I print them in my, you know, in my house, and I send them out. So it's like low overhead. Yeah, so yeah. that kind of saves my bacon too. Yeah, they, yeah. they want like no policy T-shirts or something. I'm like, okay. <laughs> really? Wow. That's yeah. awesome. I know because I thought. That was dead. Did you have anything planned for this year before this all started? No, I was hoping to play a show. You know, I was hoping that a promoter would say, put another band together and we'll play. Because every year since I've been back, I've been able to play a really cool show. Whether it was Frightwig or my old band or a band that we put together. And I was kind of looking forward to that. And that didn't happen. Yeah. And, and I thought, well, I'm just going to get serious about making my business happen like I used to have in LA. Now I don't have my deadweight ex-husband sucking all my money. I could just work. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, everything kind of slowed down with the guy I worked for. I said, look, I think things are going to close up. Do you have any orders for me so I could stay busy? Oh, well, I'll, I'll get back to you. He never called me. I ended up going on government assistance. You know, they have serving Canada. Yeah. So, so I got on that and that saved my ass, honestly. And then I noticed when I was looking online that all my collector friends are thinking, well, now that I'm home, it's, I'm gonna 
pull out my Barbie collection and, and I'm going to buy more stuff. And people were buying like the weirdest things. Like I yeah. was, I don't buy stuff like that, but I was watching all my friends like relive their uh, youth buying all the toys back because now they have time to play with them and clean them. And then I got all my stuff back from LA. I had three pallets of stuff in storage for the past four years. Right. And I had to cough up money really fast to get all that shipped back to me. So that was like the highlight of my summer, getting all my stuff that I hadn't right. seen. Because I, I was borrowing my sister's clothes, my mom's clothes. And then I had like maybe two pairs of pants or something. Because I didn't know I was going to move to Canada. And, yeah. and all my stuff was held hostage. So I had to go claim it and get it shipped. Really? It was, it was really... It was it was held hostage by by that guy. My lack of funds. Oh, your lack of funds. Okay, got it. Yeah, because it was like uh, three thousand American to get all of my stuff back, uh, oh, man. and that was kind of like way more than I wanted to spend. Sure. And it, sure. it was rough. And it's like, well, uh, if we don't ship it to you this week, we're gonna just throw it away to the dumpster. So I had to get the money. And uh, that was pretty rough, but I'm glad I got all my stuff back because there were a couple of guitars in there and things. Right. Things I need. Cool. But well, it, this, this has been the most bizarre, weird summer. I've been reading more books. I haven't played as much guitar as I wanted to. I've been drawing and yeah. always think, thinking of like, okay, yeah, uh, what can I sell? <laughs> How can I make money? You know, that, oh, yeah. that never goes away. It's just no, like that's... the main guy who promised me the world uh, making his stuff, uh, he had to shut down and he couldn't keep me busy. Right. And he has a family, so he doesn't really care what I do. It's, you know, his family. But, but also, I was wondering, because like in your interview, and um, I don't know how, you know, you can go as deep into this as you want, but you were, like you said, you didn't know that you're going to be staying in, in Montreal. It's and yeah. uh, I, think, I think at that point, um, you had already gone through a bunch of crap. Uh, some yeah. girls lost, and then there was more on top of that. So you've had a pretty, pretty challenging. Uh, I had like, the rug pulled under me. Yeah, it was really hard. Yeah. Because like, I didn't know, I, I thought I was just coming back here to mend after surgery. Yeah. I didn't know I'd move back. I didn't know I was going to lose my sister. And then just when I feel good about like moving forward, my dad gets sick and he dies. And then after that, like six months later, the exact same day, my mom dies. It was just like awful. So now I really got to go full steam. Okay, nobody's going to take care of me. I just got to kick some ass and make it work because there's no security blanket. So oh, yeah. I guess no I'm doing all I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're doing as it's, well as you can, but that's just like, that's just, that's crazy, you know, and, um, yeah, I, I have friends that, uh, still have their parents and they're an independent and it was like weird because I think my dad said, come back home and we'll take care of you and we'll help you get on your feet. And I didn't realize that I came back to say goodbye to everybody and that yeah, sucks. Yeah, and then, that's right. Yeah, I saw. And then I, I got divorced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like the so the interview the interview I did where I asked all these questions was sort of at the beginning. Yes, I, I know. Yeah. You know, I kind of liked the break at first. I kind of yeah. liked the free falling, and then after that, I I got a little concerned about sure. uh, <laughs> where's the money coming from. You know, my oh, yeah. brother's a service worker. He has to work. My sister, she was moving. She had to go out. And I was just staying home. And I was like, I got to do something. Was, oh, yeah. Yeah. Tra like, tra like, luckily, uh, as it turns out, even to this very day, the same stuff I did when I used to write you letters back in the 80s is still the same thing that keeps me sane. It's the only thing I can do that makes me feel like a somewhat normal person. And now I have yeah. to, and now I have to do it to make, to make a living because uh, I'm too old to do anything else now. You know, like this, this is it. I have to make this work forever, no matter what yeah. happens. You know, you're gonna make, you're making it work though. 
you're doing yeah. it. Yeah, but you know, it's kind of weird. It's like in some ways the pandemic, um, you know, I'm kind of introverted and I don't get out much. So it's, it was kind of like not a whole lot really changed, you know, in some ways, but in some ways it's been like, oh man, what's going to happen? You know, this whole free for all kind of like, oh, this is crazy. Pretty weird. It's weird. Yeah. 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 But you know, I, I'm not really that social either. So it's all about doing my work. So yeah. I'm like, oh, I can do, I can live with myself. It's okay. Yeah. I'm not feeling the lack, but I do miss playing shows, but usually I'm a loner. So it's yeah. no big difference being quarantined from like the world. Yeah. It's like, yeah. do you really want to see them? Do you really want to go to that party? Do you really? No. Now I, no, get, no, I got nothing to I sell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I, I developed a kind of uh, social anxiety that uh, uh, seemed to creep in in the last 20 years. Where now, like at one point, going to shows was such a, I'm all about it, and, and I just couldn't get enough. But man, that was like 20, at least 25 years ago, and I was just kind of hanging on. So now, the rare times I do go out, you know, I don't really get out much. But the rare times I do go out, I just feel really like there's this kind of social anxiety I've never had before. And I think some of that's about being old and out of place or just, you know, like maybe somebody that was an alcoholic and they go to a bar and they're like, man, I can't, I can't do this shit anymore. I can't do that. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's tricky. Yeah. But I do, <laughs> but you know, a part of me still misses playing and that kind of thing. Well, yeah um so since i wrote down some actual questions <laughs> oh, oh well, already, throw them at me. yeah but you already answered a few of them i said I, one of them was any music in the near future well you said probably not but that you miss it and, um didn't did frightwick play with you like uh not too long ago i played last july with them there was a new drummer who replaced cecilia and she was um, like a, a powerhouse. So it, it breathed like a whole new life into the band, which I totally dug. I love Cecilia, but I also love the change too, because when Cecilia was gone, we were blessed with the worst drummers. So, and so if it wasn't Cecilia, I was like, oh no, what, what are we gonna have now? So we had this girl and she was amazing and I wanted to play with her more. And then it was like, yeah, we'll, we'll get a show, we'll fly you out, but that's on hold. Deanna was yeah, waiting until after the election because she works in elections, so she didn't want to work election year. She didn't want to tour. Yeah. And uh, I'd play with them. I would play with people in Montreal. I played with one band that we put together. It was um, for a, tr a Clash tribute for yeah, uh, London not... Calling. Yeah. And that was kind of fun you know i'm I'm down for that too i i didn't expect that they'd say do you want to sing because i'm a terrible singer but i do it anyway so <laughs> it was fun yeah, yeah and i got to do all this sober now so that's a new edge too you can't be drawing oh, I, I all over yourself oh i i didn't know so you used to you so you made you've made a conscious effort to not do that stuff yeah Okay. A conscious. And it was never a problem, but I just thought, you know, I'm changing my life. I want to be totally aware of everything that's going on because it's going to suck and I need to be strong enough to face it. So, yeah. I even dumped caffeine for a while. It was just like totally hardcore. What? No, that's and crazy. I, that's crazy talk. I know it's crazy. Well, I, I drink coffee now. I love coffee. But I, I didn't drink coffee and I was on like blood pressure pills and all this garbage because I was totally messed up. Right. <laughs> and now I'm inching back there again, but it's okay. <laughs> right, right, right. So the one but, band that you oh, I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. It's okay. No, no, you talk. I'm boring. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, I thought I was, no, I thought I was boring. No, I was, I totally cut you off. Go ahead. No, I was just saying I like playing and I, I miss like getting in a room with people. I miss the smell of equipment. I love the way amplifiers smell and old guitars and stale beer, beer and cigarettes. I like all that stuff. And it's, I miss that, but it's like, 
and I miss getting around with people and having the guitars out of tune and just plugging in and having the room shake. Yeah. I like all that and I miss it. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I don't miss playing the same song over and over because it sucks uh, and you have to get better, but just being in the room with equipment and other people, it's like the best feeling. I miss that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, it's well, the, the weird down stuff. It's the little things. Sure, sure. So you're crossing your fingers, something might happen, but obviously with what's going on, everyone's gonna have to wait. Yeah, my my friend Bruce, he's in LA, Bruce stuff. He was like, get a microphone, write some music, email it to me, and we'll have a band and we'll we'll make music. And I got the microphone and I have the tools, but I just haven't done that yet because right now I just want to get my hands on cold hard cash for something I build and I don't think I have the time to relax and make music. I just, you know, I need to just keep everything going. Right, just try to bring money in. Yeah, yeah. yeah I had a, I, I started playing a little bit with this friend of mine named Mike, mm -hmm. and it's quarantined and whatever, and he works in his own studio and he plays bass in that band, Corrosion of Conformity. Oh, he, I know him. Yeah, yeah. Mike yeah. Dean, huh? Yeah, Mike Dean. So, yeah, Deanna liked him. Yeah, yeah, Mike's a very nice guy. He's, yeah, uh, he's, he's uh, so good. Yeah, he's really good. So I was actually very flattered that he thought I was good enough to play with him, although we had done that like years ago. And, you know, we're, we wore masks and, you know, so we were in this little studio and I guess somebody, somebody asked him to... Uh, Put out some music so he called me up and i was like oh that'd be great so i'm actually very grateful because i haven't really played in a couple of years and i really i kind of missed it too i don't know if i really miss being in a band but the actual playing drums part i kind of miss you know so so I, I i actually feel very grateful in fact this year even with everything kind of sucking in, in a lot of ways i it's it opens of, doors it opens doors but it's made me feel grateful about you know what I you know the good stuff like oh I'm, I'm grateful I can I can draw and act like I'm a sane person for that hour or whatever uh, you know I'm, I'm grateful yeah just even eating a sandwich you know I'm just kind of grateful that I can still do do certain things or whatever so yeah but. it's tr true like at one point I was thinking when are people gonna appreciate people like us who actually make things. I'm, I'm hoping that because everything was done on computer before. And it was like, when is hands-on going to be important to people? And it seems like maybe it might be important now. I don't know. Like yeah, everyone's buying sewing machines to learn how to sew masks and stuff. And people are yeah. doing music online together and recording yeah. it. And maybe there'll be virtual art shows again and auctions. You know, it doesn't always mean buy everything from Amazon all the time because you're bored. My friend, he was like, hey, I read about that book you're going to be in. So uh, yeah. was, was your band kind of popular or something? Should I know who you are? And I said, no. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, around. well, how do you explain the... yourself to someone who likes uh, Midnight Oil? You can't. The Midnight Oil, the, the uh, Australian version of YouTube. Yeah, like I that's that, your favorite. I don't... I don't mean that as a compliment. Wow. I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, I, I was listening. To, my new wave was Midnight Oil. How do you figure in this scene? I said, you don't. It's, it's a whole underground subversive scene that has nothing to do with that garbage. Well, I, yeah. Well, I guess what I would do if somebody asked, I'd say, well, I used to write to Rebecca like when we were kids, like in a long 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 time ago and uh you know it was um an exciting new world and and you know you were in flip side and you built guitars and you had no policy and you had that big uh article on flip side i remember you know so it's oh, kind yeah, of yeah i love like, that you know for because it was like you know punk rock yeah you know, punk rock fame. it opened so many you know, like, doors oh yeah yeah, we're like, and you know, I, I've still been working on guitars too. Yeah. I've been finding well, them in the trash, restoring them, and flipping them. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Like, just re 
be building them and then selling them back to people? Oh, well, let me, let, yeah. let's hear about that because, like, because the article on Flipside, even though it was four <laughs> years ago, was about how you built your own guitars and stuff. How many guitars had, do you think you've built over the years, and how many of your guitars do you have right now? I, I didn't build that many. I made a couple for my brothers and their friends, and uh, some odd people. I think the guy in a more did trust wanted something, so I made one for him. Um, MDC wanted stuff, but they wanted it for free, and I was broke, and they were like, oh, we'll talk about you at every show, so that never happened. So the bass and the guitar I started for MDC is in my collection right now, and, awesome. Uh, what, year, what year was this? This had to be like 83, 84, because I think I moved to LA in 85. And Franco was like, see this part of the neck? Let me get my guitar and show you. This part, okay. so important. Can you copy that? And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. And everything was so damn important. And I go, okay, where's the money? We don't have money. I go, well, I don't have money either. You're supposed to be the rock stars. You're supposed to pay me. Oh, no, we, we would give you lip service at our show. And I go, that doesn't help me. What? So it what? never happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I met a lot of stupid guys. And I thought, to hell with this. I'm going to make clothes for these same people. And I'm going to charge them triple. There's no difference right. between a bandsaw and a sewing machine. So that's why I sewed. I just like the idea that but, band members of MDC thought that exchanging money for a, a job was just a ridiculous assumption and that <laughs> you should just be grateful that you were able to build a guitar and a bass for a band with one really good record from 40 years ago. And, um, and that like everybody needs money to survive. I guess they just were acting like well, they need money to survive or something. Oh, she's she's probably a rich kid. This is a rich kid's hobby. She's probably supported, and we're so charismatic. We're just gonna get it for free. No, not happening. No, definitely not. <laughs> and all the rules, you wouldn't believe it. Everything had to be exact. Like, what do you think I am? A moron or something? And tell me everything had to be exactly perfectly the same size. Hello. So that kind of pissed me off too. Sure. <laughs> so I think being in isolation brought out that part of me, you know, be a handyman again. But uh, it's kind of interesting how things change. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Because I thought I'd never touch another guitar again. I'd never wire one. I'm not into it. I'll just buy them. And to put them together and have people, you know, it's like, oh, go buy a Squire. You don't want this thing I found in the trash. No, I want it because you're doing it. Do it for me. That's kind of flattering. So I, I did it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, you, when you create stuff, sometimes you don't really realize what it might mean to somebody else. Like, um, you know, like when you're doing stuff, uh, Actually, I'll just say this for myself. When I'm doing stuff, you know, I'm just doing it. I'm not really thinking about how good it is or how bad it is. I'm just doing it. Does that make sense? Like, you know, I'm not yeah. really overly impressed by whatever it is I can do. I just just do it. So I don't really You have think. to do it. That's why. Yeah. It's like you have to. You have to. It's like you have to eat. You have to draw. You have to draw, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just the way it is. It's just the way yeah. you're wired and there's nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. No, I'm grateful. You know, it's like, like I said earlier, it's like, oh, I, you know, I can still do the exact same thing that I was doing when I was in high school and I still can get the same, you know, I, I, I usually work with music going, you know, like I, know mm -hmm. that I can't, can't listen to music, but for whatever reason, I've always done that. And it goes back to those punk rock days of listening to some mangled, demo that you got from somebody where it's oh this sounds yeah. great and you're just like drawing yeah stuff. i hear the tune <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I need to hear some tunes and you're just kind of getting excited about doing something and the music's kind of like a soundtrack i guess you know like, yeah oh. it's i have to have music going i have to too i want to have, hear something as ferocious as whatever i'm doing like if it's sanding or sewing fast you want to hear and it's like yeah 
I don't want silence and I don't like classical music. I just want to hear noise because it gets me, uh, it Excited. gives me adrenaline. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I don't get that. Um, one job I had, I wasn't allowed listening to music. Nobody was allowed listening to music because the guy claimed if he heard a song, he'd like, he'd like, he'd start singing and he can't sing on key. And I said, that's ridiculous. If you want to sing to your music, you sing to your music. We're not going to laugh at you. You're our boss. You're paying us, you idiot. Just shut up. But Pull I, out when you I leave. Think... Hmm? Pull out when you leave, maybe. Yeah, totally. Or maybe he just didn't want to hear us singing music and he was just putting the blame on him because he didn't want to hear him going, yeah, la, 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 la. Who knows? I right. can't believe what any, I, I can't believe him. Yeah. Well, it's crazy. Well, I got a couple more questions, and I thank okay. you for your time. Um, I have to ask about working for KISS, if that's okay. You can ask me. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Well, you want to know how I got the job? <laughs> let's, let's hear it. My friend, um, my friend had the job, but I didn't know him too well. He was like a friend of a friend of mine. And... Uh, I said, I thought to myself, man, I'd do anything to have that job. And I told my friend, Tony, I said, hey, I'd kill to have that job because it's like S&M looking. I like the buckles and all this crap. So the guy who had the job was sewing jeans codpiece. And he was so frustrated sewing the codpiece because he thought, what's this stupid piece of garbage? He punched a cinder block, broke his hand on purpose so he wouldn't have to finish the job. And then next thing you know, he called me and said, hey, Rebecca. Uh, I hear you so leather and uh, I can't do this anymore. It's making me crazy. You can have all the money. I'll bring everything over. So I bought it over. I'm looking at it. And, and he said, um, when you meet the costume designer, just say that we worked on a job together and we're good friends. And I was like, yeah, sure. Cool. <laughs> and then I meet the costume designer and she got really pissed because she didn't know who I was. She didn't know if I'd like to sew. She thought I was just like someone who says, yeah, I can do it and I can't sew. Because yeah. people always think that, you know, they judge the worst. So anyway, uh, she said, do you think you can sew this up tomorrow for a fit? And I said, yeah, I could do it. And she said, when you meet Gene, he's going to ask how long I knew you. So let's just say we were friends for a long time. So that seemed to be like the running joke that we all knew each other. And then I go to Jean's house and I'm wearing a t-shirt that has the Incredible Hulk on it or something or Fantastic Four. And he comes to me, who drew that? And I knew the artist because I'm a comic book dork. And then <laughs> who, who he started it? asking, he, he collects comics. He collects yeah. Silver Age DC and I saw a bunch of Herbie comics on his desk. Who reads Herbie? And then he was like talking about the Doom Patrol and who the best greats of art were. And he told me I had no taste. And I was like, that's your opinion. You know, these people have to eat too. So it's okay that I like their stuff. Not everyone's gonna like Jack King Kirby, you know? He doesn't speak yeah. to me. He speaks to people like Gene Simmons. So I, I started sewing, I did the job. Like two weeks later, they asked me if I wanna go on tour, do a corporate show, send up the makeup and the wardrobe because they uh -huh. liked having me around for some weird reason. I was terrified. I had to um, learn who liked what brand of mascara, what kind of clown white this guy liked, what kind of clown white, everything was like so itemized. I didn't know there were so many different brands of clown white or black yeah. grease paint and someone likes the pencils. And you had to memorize all of that. And every day you had to set up everything in the exact same spot where they liked it so they can just take it and put it on their face without thinking. And that was like the most stressful job I ever had in my whole life because I just had a mental block of like putting the, the stuff in the same place every day. Yeah. And uh, I had notes and it just meant absolutely nothing to me. I just couldn't get it. I was so stupid. And uh, they'd start yelling at me and <laughs> I'd get mad and and I took photographs of the stuff. It still didn't help. I just wasn't into that. But building stuff, I can build it. But it was fun. I like to travel. And then when four o'clock came and the band showed up, that was when I got like really high strung because it was like, 
I don't like this pencil sharpener. Where's my mascara? <laughs> I don't see my mascara. And it's like, come on, it's thick. <laughs> but it was so stressful. Yeah. I hated well, it. How long ago was that? I worked with them from 2004. And I think the last time I worked with them was two years ago. I was living in Canada and I did 10 days in Spain. But I was in charge of the wardrobe, not the makeup. So yeah, that was easier for me. Yeah, you were talking about how they had reached out or, or and wanted you to do some do some more work for them. And uh, yes. I think I don't think it had happened yet. I think it was it was no. I I did manage build in the suit for Jean that he wears on stage, so like some of it. Um, all the leather, the wings, the cod piece, the leotard. Well, the other thing you said is that you weren't even like a Kiss fan, and and like uh, you know, I I I I talked to uh, Stephen a couple of days ago, one of these things, and he says hello. And cool. he Yeah, and he told me all about his Kiss stories, and you know, we were we were really smitten by Kiss, I guess. I don't know, but uh, it is pretty funny that um, you know. Uh, you didn't even really care about anything about them musically and you got a chance to walk into this interesting situation, you know. I like, like the buckles and the leather and the studs. It wasn't the band, it was just the, the pieces. Other than everything else about being back in Montreal, is it kind of nice to actually be back in your, when you grew up in Montreal? Yeah. It, it is because there's a lot of little things I missed, yeah. so that's okay. I, I like the fact that um, you can go everywhere on the island. It's not as stretched out as LA, yeah. so, so I like that. The food is really good, and it's a heck of a lot cheaper than Los Angeles. The rent's cheaper. My yeah. workroom is massive, and I wouldn't be able to afford anything half as big in Los Angeles. So. And since I'm not really that social, I just stay in there and it's like Rebecca world and I have my huge windows and my machines and it's good. I don't have to be in Los Angeles. I just want a big room that I can work in and place yeah. to buy my supplies. Yeah. So. Do you miss, do you miss Los Angeles? On some Winter time I do. I hate snow. That's really funny because I actually had a question here. Not even a question. I just wrote down Montreal winters because I have, no idea what it would be like to be up there for the winter. What is a Montreal minus thirty? Okay, um, it's really nice until Christmas. And once Christmas is over, you want the snow to melt, but that's when it gets colder. Yeah. And I went out, and it was like minus thirty degrees, like minus thirty Celsius, which is really, really cold. You go out, your nose hairs freeze, your eyes are cold, your face hurts. It's just your toes freeze and it's just unpleasant and the wind is blowing and you just want to die. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that doesn't sound too great. So you like the weather in Los Angeles, but um, every time I go back to Los Angeles, you know, I, I like it, but I just can't ever, I've been gone for so long. I just can't ever imagine what the circumstances it's, would be for me to move back there and actually think, I'm gonna like it, you know, it's just like- It changed a lot too. Yeah. Like they got rid of all the good stores and all the good clubs and you just feel like an old cruster going, yeah, there used to be a really cool record store here, it's shut. Oh, there used to be this here, it's gone. And, and they have all these big ugly glass buildings and condos that nobody can afford. It's like it's the town that I moved to doesn't exist anymore. Huh. So I, I don't yeah. feel like I'm missing too much. And it seems like most of my friends are freaking out more than I am about everything being shut down because they all worked in film. And I think they shut down a lot of the film things. Yeah. So I'm kind of grateful that I found another way to make money without relying on all these TV show people to call me. I hate going to the post office, but I'm grateful that people want to buy what I have. So I try and do it once a week and just get it over with. Yeah, yeah, when, when things started to get really bad, I didn't know what was gonna happen, so we both decided we're just gonna do it once a week just to reduce the risk of whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. 
they've opened up things a little bit, but I still just want to go once a week or twice a week at most, you know, because, um, yeah, just because I'm, I'm, it's hard, to, it's hard also to not be paranoid on top of everything, of course, you know. So, yeah. yeah, I know. It's hard about that. And you're thinking, should I be afraid of myself? Should I be watching myself or should I just be relaxed? Because I'm with these people. Are they going to get me sick? Are they going to kill me? What's going on? It's like weird. It's very weird. It's like never before could your belief system kill you. And now that's, that's a reality this year. Like, well, I don't believe that. And that's, that's, a, that's another weird place to be for sure. Like, uh, like, I lost a friend last Saturday and it was from a spider uh, bite. Not even COVID, it was, it was a spider bite. Yeah, she got bit by a brown recluse spider and uh, she didn't treat it. She didn't go to the hospital. She just said, oh, that's nothing. You know, I live in the South, there's bugs. And then her leg got really swollen up and then she went to the hospital and then it just totally tore through her body and her immune system. And that was awful. And they had an online funeral. That's another thing that they have that, uh, this pandemic bought up. I don't want to have visitation of, it's just really hard. Well, you don't have to look if you don't want to see it. You know, that's when you have to censor yeah. yourself, but it's still, it's rough. It's like, oh, yeah. it, it opens so many doors, but some of them are destructive. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, I was gonna, I was gonna conclude this by asking about future plans, but like, you're the fourth person I've talked to, and and uh, what what's happened when I asked that, I realized what a open ended, ridiculous question future plans is at this point. Well, I still want to paint people's cats because I paint cats, so I'm predicting a lot more cat paintings, uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna draw, and I'm gonna sew, and I'm gonna find that one thing that everybody needs that only I can do. Exactly. And hopefully, and hopefully make some money from it. But I, I am going to draw more. So I'm yeah. revisiting all the things that made me love being alive, which I ignored when I got so obsessed with making a buck. So maybe this is a good thing. I don't know. Yeah, it's good.